I guess now is a good time to take a look at the Cobra Power Inverter Cable Kit that I got. It seemed like a good idea at the time to just buy the cables with it, because obviously you can't use an inverter without cables. But uh, after I bought it, I realized a few things, and I would not recommend the specific kit for this inverter. And uh, there's a few reasons for that. Um, I guess to get into the technicals, which might be boring, but it's important, is uh, that these, this is 4-gauge cable, and 4-gauge sounds pretty thick. Uh, without thinking about it too much, I thought that would be enough, but uh, after looking some things up, and you can go just go to, to uh, an American wire gauge table to find this information. Um, four gauge cable is a quarter milliohm per foot. These are 10 foot cables, so there's 20 feet total of cable. Uh, 20 feet is uh, 10 milliohms of resistance. And for uh, 300 amps, which is going to be about uh, 2,500 watts, the full output capability of this inverter, uh, for 300 amps, that would give you a voltage drop of about 1.5 volts just in the cable. And that's before you account for any resistive heating in the cable. Because copper has a, uh, a temperature coefficient of about 0.4% per degree centigrade. So really you have to take that number and multiply it by about 1.5 to get uh, the full heated cable resistance, which is going to be somewhere closer to about 2 volts. And uh, if you have a 12 volt battery that already has some internal resistance, for example this automotive battery over here, it already has an internal resistance of probably 15 milliohms, so you're already going to get a pretty significant drop there. And if you add another volt and a half, two volts on top of it, your inverter is going to shut off. So these cables at 10 feet are not going to be adequate for this inverter. It's also uh, good to mention that if you really want to use the full 2500 watts that this thing is rated for, uh, if you go by any C specs, you need 4 aught cable to carry the amperage necessary to get 2500 watts. 4 aught. Uh, that's obviously not practical. Now they do give you uh, two lugs, uh, two uh, positive and two negative. Looks like they fit probably about 4 gauge cable. So you could get uh, two 4 gauges on it, but that's going to be about it. This is 10 foot. There's no battery clamps on it. I'd kind of like to be able to just clamp it onto, uh, onto a battery terminal like this instead of having to hardwire it with these loops, even though the loops are definitely better, a better connection. Uh, battery clamps get pretty warm. You run a lot of current through them for a long time. But uh, after thinking about it a little bit more, I'm not even going to use these cables to use this inverter because of the reasons I just mentioned. Instead, I went to uh, an auto store and bought some 4-gauge uh, jumper cables, which if I can show these on camera. These happen to be 4-gauge jumper cables. I got these at a, a local auto parts store for about the same price as this was anyway. Uh, they have some pretty good deals if you use online coupons. But this is 20 feet of 4 gauge cable, and it comes with battery clamps in both ends. These are DECA clamps, American made. So this is a pretty good quality cable. I took it out of the box, and uh, this is what it looks like. <clears throat> you have the uh, positive and negative clamps on it. The wire is nice and flexible. The way it's crimped into these cables is good. These uh, clamps themselves seem to be pretty good quality. Um, and I like the way that they're constructed where the cable gets crimped directly into the copper piece versus some other clamps where you crimp the, the uh, copper onto the clamp itself um, and then the current has to go through this clamp to the copper piece. That's not a very good way of doing it. So I like the way that these are made. I'm going to use these. But uh, it does seem like kind of a shame. This is a 20 foot cable and uh, I'm going to have to cut the end off of it. I only want about 4 feet of cable from my inverter to the battery ideally. But I'm going to sacrifice this really nice 4 gauge 20 foot jumper cable um, to power my inverter. But this is kind of what I would recommend um, instead of using that one. Or if you're going to use these, they do give you two extra terminal rings. You can uh, cut one of these to be about 4 feet and then uh, cut another 4 foot length or 5 foot length if you want to cut it in half. Put the rings on it and then you can fully populate all of the lugs on the, uh, on the inverter. And uh, then you should be all right. But uh, one of the major complaints that people have about inverters is really not the inverter itself. They're not giving it a good enough connection to the battery. And uh, just as another way of looking at it, if you get one volt of drop in your cable, which, uh, as I mentioned, you're going to get that just with a 1500 watt load, if you use these, you're losing 10% of your power in your cable. This thing is about 85% efficient. You lose 10% more, you're only 75% efficient. 
and that's getting to be pretty terrible. So it's very important to use good quality cables, and uh, I'm not going to use these, but I'm still going to open them up and show them to you. It's always useful to have some heavy cables sitting around for uh, whatever purposes, hobby purposes. So this isn't a complete waste. Um, and uh, these terminal rings actually are quite expensive. This is probably $5 right here if you wanted to buy it separately. So it's kind of nice to have that sitting around. But uh, this is the actual cable. Um, and uh, really it seems like pretty nice stuff. It's extremely flexible. It's a very high strand count. They tin the end so you can put it into your inverter. Uh, very easily instead of having it all spread out when you try to clamp it down um, and this really does look like pretty nice cable like I said I'm not going to use it at least initially here but uh, I can't not recommend this kit it looks pretty nice to me really um, this uh, ground cable it's not as flexible it's not as nice a cable um, it's 8 gauge instead of 4 but again it's adequate and uh, I don't really have anything bad to say about it it's actually better than I expected, considering what I paid, so I'll give this one some thumbs up, but uh, anyway, the jury's still out on the inverter, so we'll go back to that. That's more interesting anyway. Oh, do I hate doing this. I feel like these uh, brand new quality jumper cables are screaming out in pain, begging me not to cut them, but uh, I guess I must. It is done. Well, I'll uh, go ahead and, uh, and strip the end and put them on my inverter.